Hello, You Can Heal family. Here we are together again, reading along in the Gospel of Mark from the Open Bible, the New Living Translation. And normally I read in the morning, but today it's very early in the morning. It's about 2.30 and I was just up and I said, well, let, let's get going. So without further ado, let's begin. Mark chapter 14, Leaders Plot to Kill Jesus. It was now two days before the Passover celebration and the festival of unleavened bread. The leading priest and the teachers of religious law were still looking for an opportunity to capture Jesus secretly and put him to death. But not during the Passover, they agreed, or there will be a riot. Mary anoints Jesus. Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had leprosy. During supper, a woman came in with a beautiful jar of expensive perfume. She broke the seal and poured the perfume over his head. Some of those at the table were indignant. Why was this expensive perfume wasted, they asked. She could have sold it for a small fortune and given the money to the poor. And they scolded her harshly. But Jesus replied, leave her alone. Why berate her for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you and you can help them whenever you want to. But I will not be here with you much longer. She has done what she could and has anointed my body for burial ahead of time. I assure you, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be talked about in her memory. Judas plans to betray Jesus. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the 12 disciples, went to the leading priest to arrange to betray Jesus to them. The leading priests were delighted when they heard why he had come and they promised him a reward. So he began looking for the right time and place to betray Jesus. The Passover supper is prepared. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the day the Passover lambs were sacrificed, Jesus' disciples asked him, where do you want us to go to prepare the Passover supper? So Jesus sent two of them into Jerusalem to make the arrangements. As you go into the city, he told them, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Follow him. At the house he enters, say to the owner, the teacher asks, where's the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is the place. Go ahead and prepare our supper there. So the two disciples went on ahead into the city and found everything just as Jesus had said and they prepared the Passover supper there. The Passover is celebrated. In the evening, Jesus arrived with the 12 disciples. As they were sitting around the table eating, Jesus said, the truth is, one of you will betray me, one of you who is here eating with me. Greatly distressed, one by one, they began to ask, am not I the one, he replied? It is one of you, Jesus, who is eating with me now, for I, the Son of Man, must die, as the scripture declared long ago. But how terrible it will be for my betrayer, far better for him if he had never been born. The Lord's Supper is instituted. As they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread and asked God's blessing on it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood poured out for many, sealing the covenant between God and his people. I solemnly declare that I will not drink wine again until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus predicts Peter's denial. All of you will desert me, Jesus told them, for the scriptures say, God will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. Peter said to him, even if everyone else deserts you, I never will. Peter, Jesus replied, the truth is this very night before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. No, Peter insisted, not even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you and all the others bowed the same. Jesus prays in Gethsemane, and they came to an olive grove called Gethsemane, and Jesus said, sit here while I go and pray. And he took Peter, James, and John with him, 
and he began to be filled with horror and deep distress. He told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and watch with me. He went on a little farther and fell face down on the ground. He prayed that if it were possible, the awful hour awaiting him might pass by him. Abba Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me, yet I want your will, not mine. Then he returned and found the disciples asleep. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you stay awake and watch with me even one hour? Keep alert and pray. Otherwise, temptation will overpower you. For though the spirit is willing enough, the body is weak. Then Jesus left them again and prayed, repeating his pleadings. Again, he returned to them and found them sleeping, for they couldn't keep their eyes open and they didn't know what to say. When he returned to them the third time, he said, still sleeping, still resting? Enough, the time has come. I, the son of man, am betrayed into the hands of sinners. Up, let's be going. See, my betrayer is here. Jesus betrayed, Judas betrays Jesus. And immediately as he said this, Judas, one of the 12 disciples, arrived with a mob that was armed with swords and clubs. They had been sent out by the leading priests and teachers of religious law and the other leaders. Judas had given them a prearranged signal. You will know which one to arrest when I go over and give him the kiss of greeting. Then you can take him away under guard. As soon as they arrived, Judas walked up to Jesus. Teacher, he exclaimed, and gave him the kiss. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. But someone pulled out a sword and slashed off an ear of the high priest's servant. Jesus asked them, Am I some dangerous criminal that you come armed with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there teaching every day. But these things are happening to fulfill what the scriptures say about me. Meanwhile, all his disciples deserted him and ran away. There was a young man following along behind, clothed only in a linen nightshirt. When the mob tried to grab him, they tore off his clothes, but he escaped and ran away naked. The high council tries Jesus. Jesus was led to the high priest's home where the leading priests, other leaders, and teachers of religious law has gathered. Meanwhile, Peter followed far behind and then slipped inside the gate of the high priest's courtyard. For a while, he sat with the guards, warming himself by the fire. Inside, the leading priest and the entire high council were trying to find witnesses who would testify against Jesus so they could put him to death. But their efforts were in vain. Many false witnesses spoke against him, but they contra contradicted each other. Finally, some men stood up to testify against him with this lie. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with human hands, and in three days I will build another made without human hands. But even then, they didn't get their story straight. Then the high priest stood up before the others and asked Jesus, Well, aren't you going to answer these charges? Why do you have to say, what do you have to say for yourself? Jesus made no reply. Then the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the blessed God? Jesus said, I am. And you will see me, the Son of Man, sitting at God's right hand in the place of power and coming back on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothing to show his horror and said, Why do we need other witnesses? You have all heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? And they all condemned him to death. Then some of them began to spit at him, and they blindfolded him and hit his face with their fist. Who hit you that time, you prophet? They jeered, and even the guards were hitting him as they led him away. Peter denies Jesus. Meanwhile, Peter was below in the courtyard. One of the servant girls who worked for the high priest noticed Peter warning, warming himself at the fire. She looked at him closely and then said, You were one of those with Jesus the Nazarene. Peter denied it. I don't know what you're talking about, he said, and he went out into the entryway. Just then, a rooster crowed. The servant girl saw him standing there and began telling the others, 
That man is definitely one of them. Peter denied it again. A little later, some other bystanders began saying to Peter, You must be one of them because you are from Galilee. Peter said, I swear by God, I don't know this man you're talking about. And immediately, the rooster crowed the second time. Suddenly, Jesus' words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and cried. Mark chapter 15. Pilate tries Jesus. Very early in the morning, the leading priests, other leaders, and teachers of religious law, the entire high council, met to discuss their next step. They bound Jesus and took him to Pilate, the Roman governor. Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, Yes, it is as you say. Then the leading priest accused him of many crimes, and Pilate asked him, Aren't you going to say something? What about all these charges against you? But Jesus said nothing, much to Pilate's surprise. Now it was the governor's custom to release one prisoner each year at Passover time, anyone the people requested. One of the prisoners at that time was Barabbas, convicted along with others for murder during an insurrection. The mob began to crowd in toward Pilate, asking him to release a prisoner as usual. Should I give you the king of the Jews, Pilate asked? For he realized by now that the leading priest had arrested Jesus out of envy. But at this point, the leading priest stirred up the mob to demand the release of Barabbas instead of Jesus. But if I release Barabbas, Pilate asked them, what should I do with this man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Why, Pilate demanded, what crime has he committed? But the crowd only roared the louder, crucify him. Jesus is beaten. So Pilate, anxious to please the crowd, released Barabbas to them. He ordered Jesus flogged with the lead-tipped whip, then turned him over to the Roman soldiers to crucify him. The soldiers took him into their headquarters and called out the entire battalion. They dressed him in a purple robe and made a crown of long, sharp thorns and put it on his head. Then they saluted, yelling, Hail! king of the Jews, and they beat him on the head with a stick, spit on him, and dropped to their knees in mock worship. When they were finally tired of mocking him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him again. Then they led him away to be crucified. Jesus is crucified. A man named Simon, who was from Cyrene, was coming in from the city just then and they forced him to carry Jesus' cross. Simon is the father of Alexander and Rufus, and they brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means Skull Hill. They offered him wine drugged with myrrh, but he refused it. Then they nailed him to the cross. They gambled for his clothes throwing dice to decide who would get them. It was nine o'clock in the morning when the crucifixion took place. A signboard would fasten to the cross above Jesus' head announcing the charge against him. It read, the king of the Jews. Two criminals were crucified with him, their crosses on either side of his, and the people passing by shouted abuse, shaking their heads in mockery. Ha, look at you now, they yelled at him. You can destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, can you? Well then, save yourself and come down from the cross. The leading priests and teachers of religious law also mocked Jesus. He saved others, they scoffed, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down from the cross so we can see it and believe it. Even the two criminals who were being crucified with Jesus ridiculed him. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. Then at that time, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah. One of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up to him on a stick so he could drink. Leave him alone. Let's see whether Eli will come and take him down, he said. 
Then Jesus uttered another loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the Roman officers who stood facing him saw how he had died, he exclaimed, truly, this was the son of God. Some women were there watching from a distance, including Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother, mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph and Salmon. They had been followers of Jesus and had cared for him while he was in Galilee. Then they and many other women had come with him to Jerusalem. Jesus is buried. This all happened on Friday, the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath. As evening approached, an honored member of the high council, Joseph from Arimathea, who was waiting for the kingdom of God to come, gathered his courage and went to Pilate to ask for Jesus' body. Pilate couldn't believe that Jesus was already dead, so he called for the Roman military officer in charge and asked him. The officer confirmed the fact, and Pilate told Joseph he could have the body. Joseph bought a long sheet of linen cloth, and taking Jesus' body down from the cross, he wrapped it in the cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been carved out of a rock. Then he rolled a stone in front of the entrance. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph saw where Jesus' body was laid. Mark chapter 16, the resurrection of Jesus. The next evening when the Sabbath ended, Mary Magdalene and Solomon and Mary, the mother of James, went out and purchased burial spices to put on Jesus' body. Very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they came to the tomb. On the way, they were discussing who would roll the stone away from the entrance to the tomb. But when they arrived, they looked up and saw that the stone, a very large one, had already been rolled aside. So they entered the tomb, and there, on the right, sat a young man clothed in a white robe. The women were startled, but the angel said, Do not be so surprised. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He isn't here. He has been raised from the dead. Look, this is where they lay his body. Now go and give this message to his disciples, including Peter. Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you before he died. The women fled from the tomb, trembling and bewildered, saying nothing to anyone because they were too frightened to talk. Short ending of Mark. Then they reported all these instructions briefly to Peter and his compassions. Afterward, Jesus himself sent them out from east to west with the sacred and unfailing message of salvation that gives eternal life. Amen. Longer ending of Mark. The appearances of Jesus. It was early on Sunday morning when Jesus rose from the dead and the first person who saw him was Mary Magdalene, the woman from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went and found the disciples who were grieving and weeping. But when she told them that Jesus was alive and she had seen him, they didn't believe her. Afterward, he appeared to two who were walking from Jerusalem and to the country, but they didn't recognize him at first because he had changed his appearance. When they realized who he was, they rushed back to tell the others, but no one believed them. Still, later, he appeared to the eleven disciples as they were eating together. He rebuked them for their unbelief, their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And then he told them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone, everywhere. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved, but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name, and they will speak in new languages. They will be able to handle snakes with safety, and if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick and heal them. The Ascension of Jesus When the Lord Jesus had finished talking with them, he was taken up into heaven and sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. And the disciples went everywhere and preached, and the Lord worked with them, confirming what they said by many miraculous signs. 
And that not only concludes our reading for today, but we have just concluded reading the Gospel of Mark. So well done. I want to congratulate you for tuning in and listening to the reading of the word and hearing it and getting it way down in your spirit. It's such a blessing to be sharing um, and reading the Bible with you. If this is your first time listening to me read, my name is Sheena Major and I'm a life coach and I help people heal from unhealthy relationships. And I know that the word of God is is healing because God is a healing God. Um, We just read that he came to die for you. You know, he came to serve you. He came so that um, you could live, you know, that I could live, that we could be free. And it, it's humbling to just sit with these words that you just heard, you know, and to realize that, wow, we do serve a real God, alive and well. He came and did exactly what he said he was going to do. Remember when he was in the, went in the garden, he, he had to pray But he said, you know, Father, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, I want your will. You know, if anything today, seek Jesus' will. Seek his will above your own. You know, things might be going on in your life right now and that you may not understand, but God is with you. He always has been and always will be. He's walking with you just like he... Um, rose and was walking back on the road you know he he did exactly what he said he was going to do then and he will do that for you now so whatever it is you're believing for hoping for praying for just know that God is God is God is God God is God he's everything he is your everything he's our everything and um, he'll never leave us So I'd like to pray with you, and then we will continue tomorrow, moving on to the Gospel of Luke. I'm excited for that. So Father, thank you so much for this time together, the reading of your word. I pray that those who are listening would take all these truths into their spirit and want to be more and more like Jesus every day, would want to serve just as he came to serve. I'm thankful for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Always remember that true healing begins with self-love. Goodbye.